Hello everybody, it's Scott coming to you live from the sanctuary. You might um, wonder why I always say that when I start. Um, this place that we now live is uh, what we call the sanctuary. We felt the Lord gave us that. I never like when people do things like that. But he did give us that name for this place. And um, it is a sanctuary to us. Uh, sanctuary in our lives. Sanctuary for our ministry sanctuary for the days ahead sanctuary from all the things that have gone on in our lives to mold us into who we are to get us to where we are today you know every single one of us have um, things that we go through in life there's been a lot that Kim and I have gone through uh, abuse in churches uh, people not receiving us uh, ministers afraid of us um, saying things uh, falsely about us things like that that happen in the body of Christ and uh, it doesn't sway us we continue to do what we know God wants us to do and um, you know every single one of us have things in our life that we should expect to happen uh, it's part of how God molds the, his character in us and makes us into the person he wants us to be so that we can fulfill the destiny upon our lives and the ministry that he's called us to um, you know, I know I'm, I remember a minister saying to me, you know, Scott, you don't know, you don't understand the warfare that I have to go through. And, and that's, that's, you know, he was really justifying his reason for not being able to be at church or not to be able to be able to be at church on time. And, and I thought at that time, that just doesn't make any sense. See, because the warfare that we experience in life, uh, the warrior is meat for the warfare. So whatever we're going through, we always have the victory or the ability to attain to victory if we'll but uh, pull on God and connect with Him and war in the Spirit and stand, stand faithful and uh, be tenacious and we'll find ourselves on the side of victory every time there's warfare waged against us. But just to show you the place, uh, you know, you probably see a little bit of it when I'm, um, when I'm speaking. Um, I'll just give you a little glimpse. I'm sitting on my little swing here and enjoying myself over there is our four geese uh, by the pond and our four new additions uh, these ducks that are swimming in the pond and uh, this is the place where we live it's uh, it is a sanctuary for us and the word sanctuary itself really uh, it means a consecrated place such as the the Jewish temple um, was it's it's a sacred place uh, it speaks of it being a refuge, a place of refuge, uh, speaking mostly uh, for wild animals and things and wildlife, but also a place of refuge and a place of protection. Um, that word refuge means a shelter or protection from danger or distress, a place that provides shelter or protection, something to which one has recourse in difficulty. And um, like I, like I said as I started, this is the place that God has brought us to, this place of refuge, this sanctuary. Uh, that's why I always say when I start, it's Scott coming to you live from the sanctuary, because that's where I am. It's a, it's a place for us as we're launching our new ministry, we're moving forward into uh, what God has for us. And uh, had a great time connecting with uh, a pastor here today in the region. And uh, shout out to Shane Hill of the Mission. God bless you, Shane. We had a great time with you. Uh, could could be our new home away from home uh, of, a, of a home church um, uh, but still my home church is is New Beginnings Fellowship in Belvedere shout out to Pastor Horst and Pastor Mike and um, anyway but we do need to have a new place here that we have as a base and so we've been looking for that and uh, looking to connect with uh, other ministers in the area too so that we can fulfill our mission here but I would just wanted to talk a little bit uh, today, just to continue on what we were, what I was speaking about uh, last time, and we were talking about the fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles and the need for um, a second wind to come to the church. Passover was the initial breath in the spirit for the new birth of the believer. Uh, Pentecost was the initial wind in the spirit, setting the sail to the church as the church was birthed, and now uh, we are in uh, the. Uh, fulfillment of things as as I see it with the uh, church coming out of the wilderness and it's going to need a second wind to fulfill that which God is getting ready to do 
and we used as our uh, passage last time, Acts 3, 18 through 21, says, But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And then here comes Peter going into something prophetic. You know, when we speak prophetically, we don't always know what we're talking about. I don't know if Peter knew what he was talking about. Uh, but uh, the, the things of the last days are being opened up in the last days that we might understand exactly what it is that he was talking about. He's, and he tells them right there that the next thing that's going to take place is that times of refreshing are going to come from the presence of the Lord and that God may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. And so we see that the, um, the church has been since this moment, this first message preached, and Peter taps into this prophetic utterance and releases it, that the church has been on a path to fulfill that from the beginning. That God has, in a chronos moment of time, I shared this last time, in a chronos moment of time, he is going to bring about the restoration of all things. And when he brings about the restoration of all things in that chronos time, that set time, that then, that measured time, that then uh, Jesus will return. But before that, he says that there is a Kairos moment of time, a time of refreshing, a time of second wind is actually the word there in the Greek, a second wind that is coming to the church. There's a Kairos moment that's going to occur uh, prior to the restoration of all things or as all things are being restored prior to Jesus returning that's going to come to the church the second wind is going to come to the church this this wind of refreshing this type of wind it speaks of in the Greek of uh, refreshing that comes um, uh, when you've been running and you're overheated and you need this second wind to come um, is coming to the church to give us the last legs to finish the race and fulfill that which we've been called to do to become the actual bride of Christ in the sense of being holy and spotless and blameless and um, being the, gl the glorious remnant bride. It's uh, such a vision that I see of uh, this whole change that is coming to the church and I'm sure I'll be speaking about it in times to come here is that there's, uh, I shared in one of my posts that the church, uh, some leaders are afraid when uh, a prophet comes in and in, in his, the spirit of reformation that works in his life, he begins to shake the boat a little bit and they're like, stop rocking the boat. What they don't understand is God's not trying to rock the boat. God's trying to flip it over and start all over again because it's upside down. Um, but uh, this, is, this is where we're headed is to, is to, to see a change take place uh, in the body of Christ that's going to be no longer just the leaders and no longer the separation of the leaders from the congregation, but us all being of one body, connected together, all living the same type of life, having the same vision, pursuing God with all of our hearts and seeing that God is going to pour out his glory upon all of us, not just the leaders being separated unto God, but the entire body of Christ being separated unto God and the uh, Spirit of God being poured out where the, we're not talking about uh, leaders where you know millions of people are gonna gather in some stadium and people are gonna get saved like the days of Billy Graham and that. Those days I don't believe are returning. What I believe is that it's going to be the natural, average, everyday believer who has sold out to God, who's given their life to Jesus Christ in exchange for him, giving his life for us, and they're going to be filled with the glory of God. We're gonna see just regular believers on the streets in, uh, in, in the store, at the grocery store, at the restaurant, uh, in the parking lot, in the parks, uh, wherever they might be, and people getting be from them the glory of God manifesting, people being saved, people being filled with the Holy Spirit, people being healed, signs, wonders, miracles happening. It's going to be a, a people ablaze across the face of the earth that are, uh, that are going to be filled with the glory of God. And it's, I don't believe it's the entire body. I believe it's a remnant. And that's why I always say it's the glorious remnant bride that is coming forth and that that is going to be uh, manifest in the face of the earth. And this is who Jesus is coming back for. And uh, But this Kairos moment that I'm speaking about, the Kairos moment happens in a moment. It's a suddenly. It's not a scheduled event, but it is going to happen and it's going to occur. The thing about the Kairos moment is, it's kind of like when Jesus said they didn't recognize their day of visitation. This Kairos moment will come in a moment to where 
the um, you've either prepared for it or you haven't. You're either going to be in or you're going to be out. The separation is already taking place. I've spoken about the Great Divide before and the apostasy to come that's already actually beginning. Apostasy doesn't happen on a day. It happens within hearts as we slowly fall away and fall away. Before we know it, we've separated ourselves on a path that is so far from the glorious church that by the time we realize it, it's too late. And. Um, and so uh, I'm sharing that to get us to realize that this Kairos moment is something we have to be prepared for, we have to be readied for, and then that second wind's gonna pour out upon us. That thing that I was just describing in the glorious remnant church moving out there, the glorious remnant bride moving across the face of the earth, flames of a blazing fire uh, filled with the spirit of God and his anointing and glory is going to spread across the entire earth. And then we're gonna see in that revival, what I call the revival, then we're going to see the Great Awakening, not just in the United States, I believe. I believe there's a Great Awakening that's going to happen all over the world, and people are going to come to Christ in droves. M millions of people coming to Christ, and then we're going to see Jesus return, and it's going to be an awesome thing. Well, thanks for listening today. That's all I have to share. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for listening. I love you. Again, uh, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's under Revivalist Scott. You can see uh, these messages and other things there. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye.